For us at Unicree, one of the things that we spend a great deal of time doing is teaching member states who don't know what other member states do know. And we spend a lot of time sharing information, and that goes both ways. Uh, it isn't like the, the Western world teaches the others, or it, it's a two-way street. On this particular issue, um, I, I think it's more split than that. I think we have to teach those who know and those who don't know and, and help them. And that's this organization, this, this um, event, is really about sharing knowledge between two different sets of people. In 2015, we had our first event at, the, um, at UNGA, at the United Nations General Assembly in New York, where we brought together some of the greatest minds on artificial intelligence, and we brought together um, member states. We filled a room to standing room only and had the folks talk about what does this mean to member states. Um, and that, that was the beginning. What we're doing is setting up a center in The Hague, and the, at that center, we will spend our time creating a, a, shall we call it a platform or a communication technique that will allow us to share the knowledge of those who have it and those who don't. I think artificial intelligence is um, the way of the future, and I think that it is going to bring the SDGs in line in a way that, that we cannot. So our earlier speakers today, I think, um, really expressed that much better than I. Um, and through our center, we will spend a lot of time putting people together with private industry, academics, policymakers, government officials, and, and our job I see as being the interpreters of that language because the academics traditionally don't speak well with policymakers, and policymakers don't hear well from practitioners. And, and, and as we go around, each group seems to speak their own language, and our job is to interpret that. And then, of course, um, there's, there's AI for good, and for every good that there is, there's somebody out there who would like to take that information and use it in a negative way. Um, and we want to see this continue to go without, um, uh, without any restriction, but we also want, on the other side, for governments to be ready, and, to, and, and I don't think we're ready. Um, it, we, the world, I don't think we're ready, because because governments traditionally move a little bit slower, more methodical through more rules and regulations, and, um, and criminals don't. Um, they tend to, to move very quickly, and it's very difficult for those two things to come together, and our center, is, our center will be focused on that. Because I think the prediction of what AI will be good for um, is really difficult at this point in time. And it is true that law enforcement is using um, AI. I think that corrections should be able to use it. I think um, predictive, um, predicting human behavior is incredibly inexact science. And I think one of the examples that was given this morning in medical research, um, where we can take the data from all cancer patients for a specific cancer, not just the three or four that we know about in this particular locality. Um, and we can see what the outcomes of their treatment. That's the same thing that can be used for uh, rehabilitating or, or habilitating folks who are in corrections or in the criminal justice system. And, and we need the super mind to do that because we don't have the, the ability and the data currently. So I think that we'll see a lot of interventions in, in the criminal justice system all the way along. Um, as fast as, as we come up with those interventions, the criminals will come up with new ways to, to do their, um, and, and they will intervene in what we try to do. So I think we have to just try to stay one step ahead.